uh, Janice Carson from uh, the College of Res Respiratory Therapists uh, of Ontario. Hi all, I'm going to stand still because unfortunately I sprained my ankle earlier this week snowboarding. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I will try and keep to my just under five minutes now. Um, so I'm from the College of Respiratory Therapists. Um, the role of the CRTO is to regulate the practice of respiratory therapy and govern the members of the CRTO in the public interest. Um, so the healthcare regulation side of everything. Um, what we considered when we were looking at the open badges almost two years ago now we started talking to Don. This has been a little while, but um, we considered pretty much everything. So can we credential our members? Can we, num uh, years they've been with the, uh, a member of the CRTO, um, quality assurance submissions. But what we ended up doing was a sur starting with anyways is a service-based recognition for our council and committee members and our peer assessors that we use to administer the QA program and internationally educated members. Um, so just a little bit of background. The, we have an electoral cycle that's a three-year cycle. So there's seven districts within the province of Ontario where members are elected to council and committees. And um, so we have two years on, one year off. So elections are two years. So they basically serve a three-year term. And um, the peer assessors for the IEHP and the QA, they are also three-year terms, um, and they can do a maximum of three terms, so nine years total with our organization. Um, so we decided that that was a good starting point, was to recognize their service that they are giving to the organization. Um, so our first badge is that one up there. Um, so it's for our council members and slight variations for the other IEHP, QA, because those both have different skill sets that are needed, and then the committee members as well, which are very similar to the council member um, positions. So we, with doing that, we presented this to council in December, and they were um, very intrigued by it. Some of our healthcare managers that work at facilities, I think both were actually at facilities within the GTA, they were very intrigued by this and wanted to take it back to their organizations to use at the organizational level as well. Um, so that was very promising that not just our council committee members that were engaged in this and interested in it, but they could see a need for it beyond us into their own organizational levels um, for RTs on the healthcare um, as well. So that was, that was a nice bonus to it all. Um, so our the first badge is actually being released next week, or the first three badges, which will be council, committee, and um, um, president, vice president. So, because again, they need slightly different skill sets. So they, they do more when they're president or vice president of their organization. So those will be the first ones that go out um, next week. And um, we're looking forward to the implementation. We're still exploring what else we can do with it at an organizational level beyond the um, service commitment and um, competency-based appointments, like all that kind of stuff. So we're, we're still feeling it out, still looking to see what else we can do with it, but I think we're at a good starting point now. Um, and I don't know, good. really. Doesn't that, have to I be five minutes. It. No, great. I think that basically covers what we're doing right okay. now. Another year from now, I might have even more I can do, but. For right now that should cover it so i guess my igniter question is what else could we do from a regulatory body level and you're at table two two table two okay, I think okay. That's thanks it. very much so thank Janet. you okay <laughs>